Shalom. Shalom. Michelle and Joe here. Um, I've been thinking about how we just celebrated Passover. It was awesome. We, we celebrated the freedom out of Egypt. And so it got me thinking, I married an Italian. What is Jewish about Easter? For those couples out there that, you know, Jewish Christian, mm -hmm. just something cool that I thought would be a cool question. <laughs> okay, good night. Bye. Yes. Easter, um, I, I tend to prefer to use the phrase Resurrection Sunday because Easter gets its name, it gets its roots from the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Uh, so I prefer to call it Resurrection Sunday. And it, there's definitely a Jewish roots there because Passover is the celebration of freedom from slavery in Egypt. And as believers in Yeshua, believers in Jesus, we celebrate our freedom from sin and death that through his death, our sins are washed clean. When he died, he said, this is my body. His body became the bread of affliction for us. And his, his, when he said, this is my blood, he was raising the cup of redemption. So his blood became that cup of redemption for us so that we're redeemed by God, that we don't have to suffer in eternity away from God. What does this have to do with Resurrection Sunday? Well, Resurrection Sunday occurs on the Jewish Feast of First Fruits. And that was where a Jewish person would take, make a wave offering, bring a grain of uh, wheat and wave it before the altar of God, signifying this is the first fruits of our harvest and hopefully there'll be another greater harvest uh, for their crops. Yeshua, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, but now Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Messiah all will be made alive. So Yeshua was the first fruits of God, God's own wave offering to us, the first fruits of a great harvest of souls to come for him. So that's the significance of Yeshua rising on the day of first fruits. So for people who are Jewish out there and wondering about Easter, mm -hmm. it's the celebration of the risen Messiah. I mean, this is kind of basic for some people, but right. some people maybe not. Exactly. Because in our society, of course, you know, there's the Easter bunny and the eggs. And, you know, yeah. some people just totally forgot. Bunnies like, have nothing Easter? to do with Easter. What is Easter? <laughs> I like Easter eggs. Is it a Jewish bunny? I like bunny? chocolate bunnies. Is it a Jewish bunny? <laughs> it's a Jewish bunny. Instead of going hop, 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 he goes, oi, oi. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, also, you know, I was wondering, so just really cool, just to backtrack, because we just celebrated Passover, for a Jewish person who doesn't believe in Yeshua, you know, we would only celebrate the freedom from slavery of our ancestors, right. but maybe not the freedom from slavery now. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. But for me, as a Messianic Jew, I believe Yeshua died and rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. That he made atonement for my sin as a Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. And of course, sin is missing the mark. It's not like, you know, you don't have to do something horrible to be a sinner. A sinner is just somebody missing who missed the, the mark, mm -hmm. missed the will of God. You know, we all fall short. Nobody's perfect, you know. Um, nobody's perfect. You got that one. Got it. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's, it's freedom. It's resurrection. And so it's exciting that I just went from celebrating Passover, mm -hmm. freedom, hallelujah, dainu. It would have been enough to like now celebrating that he's risen. That's so cool. Well, a lot of people might not understand, well, what freedom from what? What are you talking about as a believer in Jesus? What are you free from? In our lives, without Messiah in our hearts, we're going to have some God. Everybody's got a God, whether it's Messiah, Yeshua, whether it's Buddha, whether it's whatever. Everybody's got a God. Even an atheist, that's their God. Their God is no God. And everybody's got something in there that controls their moral code, I guess you would call it. But for, for, for most of us, we believe that mm -hmm. without Messiah in our lives, there's this law of, of sin and death over us that we can't face the perfect, wonderful, mighty God in our own strength. Yeshua died for us so that we don't him. have to worry about, oh, what am I going to do for God to forgive me of my sins? He mm -hmm. was the Lamb of God. When, when Yochanan the that. Immersal, when John the Baptist, Yochanan the Immersal, when he said, Behold, Behold the, Lamb the Lamb of God, God. 
that whole Jewish Things crowd knew ex- the the that whole Jewish crowd <laughs> knew exactly what he was talking about, I love that and they me. knew he was referring to the Passover lamb that would be slain to wash to wipe away the sins and to protect the people on that that first night of Passover where God killed the firstborn in mm-hmm. Egypt. Mm-hmm. The same thing, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That the sacrifice of Messiah wipes the slate clean for right. everyone if those who receive him into their hearts. Right. And I want to reiterate, you know, if, if you're thinking about, oh, sin, I don't need forgiveness of sin. Just remember, sin brings pain. Mm-hmm. When we don't do God's best for our lives, sometimes there's there are small consequences, but other times the consequences are painful and they bring tears and they steal joy. And there's one other so thing I, want I wanted that. to we bring. We want God to wash that. We and there's one that. other thing I wanted to bring out, like during Passover, Jewish people eat unleavened bread. Leaven represents sin. And as believers in Messiah, we should also embrace this time. Not that we have to eat the unleavened bread. God looks fat down Not and says, so. I'm a good mm-hmm. boy. The reason why is that just like leaven represents sin and it puffs up the whole loaf of bread, we look at the Messiah as washing away the sins from our heart. So mm-hmm. to honor him, we eat the matzah because through him, there is no sin. In, there was right. no sin in him, and he was the perfect Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. And we as believers, we want to honor him. So it's not that it, we have to do this because he's going to be happy. It's that we honor him by eating yeah. the unleavened bread. But by his power. Now, I love a good French toast made with challah bread. But tomorrow, I might make matzah bread instead because... Mm-hmm. I want to honor him and I want to remember that. that just as we get rid of the leaven out of a person's house, the Messiah was buried through his burial, our sins were washed away through his death Amen. and resurrection. So that leads to the next question, which I think you kind of answered already a little mm-hmm. bit. I, I love self-improvement. You know, I'm the one who comes out of like all these self-improvement books throughout my life and mm-hmm. it's pretty much all I've read. Um, if you look at my book collection, it's she all about positive else. thinking and improving yourself and being a better person, better communicator, Dale Carnegie and all that. She won't even read my book, Don't Hate Me Because I'm Beautiful. There you go. Oh, you wrote that book? I wrote the book. That's great. So what could be our attitude? I don't want to say should because should is a, is a condemning word. Mm-hmm. What could be our attitude if we want to really draw close to God on this special day? Is it more reflective? Is it more celebratory? Like we're free? It's a celebration that through Messiah's death and resurrection, we've been set free. We Amen. won't have to face an eternity. Uh, people the always castle on a cloud. Yeah, she goes singing again. It's a beautiful. Yeah, but when you when we when we go on, we're not gonna go to the place where there's no exit and when there's no joy and you're just gonna be lonely and suffering. We'll be enjoying life with Messiah, walking on streets of gold. Oh, Items that we, pref- we, gold is something that people Woo! value. And I don't know, it's $1,700 an ounce, $1,600 we're an ounce. Walk we're going to walk on that. That's going to be the asphalt <laughs> of heaven is gold. Imagine how amazing heaven is going to be. And, and this should right. be a celebration that through his death and resurrection, we can enjoy that, that if we have him in our hearts, we Spend ask gold. Yeshua into our lives. Amen. No matter what we face in this world, we have a better world yet to come. We have a better place waiting for us. And although we might not go through perfection here on earth, it doesn't matter because there's a joy that's waiting for us on the other side of the veil. And it's, it's out of this world. Literally. Amen. If you're listening today and you're really thinking about Yeshua, if he's the Messiah, I challenge you to ask the Lord and say, is Yeshua the Messiah? If so, just show me. Just show me because he's a big enough God. He can show He'll you. He'll prove himself to you. And uh, we do want to pray a blessing over you today. Amen. Um, I'll do it in Hebrew and you could do it in English if that's okay. That's fine with me. <laughs> Ya era do nai pana bala khavi khonekha ye sa do nai pana bala kha ye sam lekha shalom the lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace. Amen. God bless you. Good night.
שלום.